So he grew up in the South, uh, like many young men in the 1960s. I'm sure you had to face some difficulties, challenges. Tell me a little bit about your life growing up in the South and, and coming into manhood. It was uh, a time of development within the segregated South where community meant a great deal. People connected with each other, African Americans relied on each other. Uh, as I'm sure you know the kind of story that I, that I grew up under and that is once you left home you didn't leave home actually and be able to have an identity away from home. You were well known on block after block wherever you went. And if you, my, my grandmother would say, boy, don't let any bad news come back in here about you. And it was, it was that life and that lifestyle. On the other hand, uh, there were very significant racial issues, obviously, as me b being born in 47 and coming into the quote-unquote hot 60s, the time of Dr. King and the civil rights marches, not only in the South, but all over the country. Uh, it was a time that local communities and, and local places like Wilson, North Carolina, I'm sure Durham, were organizing how to march, teaching young people in the, in the basement of, their, of churches to organize and to come into marches in the street and so forth. I was a part of that. I've mentioned to you, and you know someone that went to NCCU here, uh, both to undergrad and law school, but Congressman Butterfield. He and I were, were classmates. His father was very active and was a part of the organizing element. My grandfather was a deacon with his father in the same uh, church in Wilson, North Carolina. The point being is when marches would happen, I would be right there in the middle with G.K. Butterfield and other classmates and so forth. Marching up to the theaters, wanting to get a ticket where we could be seated where the whites were seated. Or, or marching up to restaurants, wanting to be able to not go in the back but go in the front. Marching up to Woolworth's lunch counter wanting to be able to be served there just like others and so forth. So that was a period of, of challenge. It was a period of, of uh, confrontation, both externally but also internally. Who am I? What's going on in my life, right? I remember when integration of the schools began, even though Brown versus Board of Education said that, you know, schools could be integrated from way back, it certainly didn't happen, uh, start to happen until I was a senior in high school. But as a senior in high school, it we began to be able to go to the quote-unquote white library in Wilson, North Carolina, to be able to go to access research information, to be able to access those catalogs that had the kind of information that our little tiny uh, black library had no no possible way to have any information like that. So when you think about that, even though, yes, we had a school library, but even that could not compare to this large uh, uh, public library that was meant to support educational development for all students in middle school, in high school, and so forth. I remember sitting with my classmates uh, around a kind of a study table in that library and looking around and going, wow, look at this. It was as though, you know, we, we felt we had arrived, so to speak. But of course, that was only uh, in our minds, quite frankly. Nothing changed at all 
but related to that divide that the railroad track gave us, right? Between the white community and the black community. Mm -hmm.